Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. My name is Linda Renatowski. I'm a nurse practitioner in uh, two different subspecialties of neurology, epilepsy and movement disorders. I have been working at Sutter Neuroscience and then uh, also with the Sacramento Comprehensive Epilepsy Program with Dr. Bergerman. This is um, not epilepsy related, but it's something that's my passion. Um, when I'm not working or doing other fun stuff, I am a windsurfer, and so this is my husband. Uh, when we were on a windsurfing vacation, jumping in Maui. Okay, my disclosures, I'm actually a paid consultant for Cyberonics. So the presentation goal, really, I'm just here to set the stage. I want to kind of have everyone you know, at the same um, level talk about intractable epilepsy because that is what drives some of the new technology is that there is a population that we're not meeting their needs and that of people with intractable epilepsy. So we're gonna talk about the, what is epilepsy, the goals, what is intractable epilepsy, and then describe therapy options. A seizure is abnormal and excessively synchronized uh, neuro discharge, and the symptoms are based upon what part of the brain is involved. One out of ten individuals really worldwide will have a seizure at some point in their life, and most of the time it's not repeated. So epilepsy, in contrast, is more than one not um, unprovoked seizure. And it is 1% of the population have um, epilepsy, uh, the prevalence of epilepsy at any given time. The incidence, is, the new onset um, seizure is actually the very highest in the elderly, but it was always in uh, neonates and infants, but now the elderly have surpassed the young. And the mortality of people with epilepsy is probably two to five percent greater than the general population. And we don't like to talk about this, but we have to talk about it. And especially with our patients, it's a really tricky top, uh, topic to approach. But there is a condition called SUDEP, which is sudden unexplained death in epilepsy patients. Okay, seizure type. So you can define, there are a lot of different ways to define seizure, and the most useful is how it starts. Either it starts one place and spreads or starts everywhere in the brain at once. So the generalized pattern can be tonic, clonic, uh, so a variety of different types, but the common theme is there is no warning. Now there is a new trend to reclassify epilepsy and uh, what they want to, the International League Against Epilepsy is trying to incorporate is actually how it's something about the nature of the epilepsy and why it exists. Is it, is it a generalized epilepsy from birth trauma? Is it a generalized epilepsy from infectious related? Um, is it, um, or is it, uh, it, for example, juvenile myoclonic epilepsy is now known as a generalized onset presumed genetic. So the other type, partial onset, so focal or partial, and the old terms, it keeps on, we keep switching on the way we like to define these things. For it was aura, and that, then it was simple partial seizure, and now we're actually going back to aura again. And then the other type is complex partial, and so now it is called focal onset with discognitive features. So it's a partial onset, the person does not totally have control of, of their level of awareness. They uh, may act like a robot and pick at things, but the common thing is it is, it, does, it is a focal onset, and it's different than the generalized onset of absent, or sometimes people call it petite mal seizures. And then finally, there, you can have a focal onset with secondary generalization or a generalized tonic-clonic convulsion, and it can be so quick to spread that you don't even know it's a focal onset. Okay, so the diagnosis, it primarily is in the history. And so we get information from the reliable or unreliable witnesses, and a physical examination, which a lot of times is going to be normal, and then, and then we're going to do an EEG, and in the case of most times we're going to do an MRI, at least in an adult we're going to do an MRI, and then there can be other supporting um, 
test. But again, the, it's really in the history and what, what it suggests. And then, is it time to treat? Is it a one-time seizure? So we don't usually, one out of 10 people have a seizure. So do we want to treat? Well, let's say they have a, an abnormal EEG suggestive of a generalized seizure type that we know is likely to cause, you know, have additional seizures. So we may treat after one seizure. And it's usually medication. So what are our goals of therapy? No seizures, no side effects, and no restriction for fear of seizures. Well, are we meeting these goals? Um, there is a large population that no matter what you do, they're going to be hard to have, hard to treat seizures. And the best study that outlined this was actually done in Scotland. And it was a very large prospective study that included new, it was new onset seizures, and it was a very, it was from the very young to the very elderly they followed. And so what they did was they just started them on medications, and 64% were seizure free after the first drug. An additional 14% were seizure free after the starting either a second or third drug. And then of those, 3% were um, seizure free on, uh, on two drug or more drugs. So overall, 11% of patients are seizure free if the first drug is ineffective. And so that's not the same as if they failed it because of side effects. But if they failed the first drug due to, um, due to lack of seizure control, we know that they're likely a different category. And so what we know now is that we're calling people seizure-free after a failure to have their seizures controlled due to efficacy after two or three appropriately selected medications. So we have to also consider whether we had an adequate medication trial. Did we try a medication that may worsen that seizure type? And finally, is it in fact epilepsy or is it one of the mimics? Is it um, psychogenic non-epileptic events? Is it physiological non-epileptic events? So we have to reconsider the diagnosis. So what do we do with these patients that are refractory or in track, have intractable epilepsy? Uh, so we know that it's about one out of 20 people if they fail two or three appropriately selected medications will be seizure free on any additional medication. And this, this really continues to exist even after all of these new medications that have come onto the market in the, over the last 20 years. And so the other options are, well, there are non, there are non medical options such as a ketogenic diet, and then surgical options, either palliative, so helpful or not thought to be curative, such as the vagus nerve stimulator, or other, there are some other, surg other surgical uh, palliative options. And then finally, curative resective surgery. Now, people that have the best chance to be seizure-free are usually people, either if you have an identified lesion um, or if you have temporal lobectomy, um, temp, excuse me, temporal lobe seizures. And so there was a large population study in Canada, a prospective study of people with temporal lobe epilepsy that was conducted uh, by Dr. Weeb. And this was published uh, in 2001 uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, what they did was they actually, it was a controlled, um, a uh, randomized controlled trial. And the, the way they were able to do it was that there is a year waiting period in Canada for the surgery. And so what they did was they did not make the people wait. They just, the people that were randomized to surgery had the surgery um, early. So what they found, there were 80 randomized patients, 58% of the surgical group that actually had surgery were seizure free with or without an aura. And 64, but this, um, this is because one person 
um, did not have surgery that was randomized to the surgical group. And if you throw out that one person, it's 64, 64% uh, were seizure free after a year that were treated by temporal lobectomy. Eight per, only 8% 8 of the medical group were seizure free. And one case of sudden unexplained, unexplained death in epilepsy patients in the medical group. Okay, one summary, talked about seizure and epilepsy treatment goals medically refractory or intractable epilepsy, and some the basic treatment options. And this is actually, and this happened at an hour south of here, southwest of here. This is in the Delta, just past Rio Vista. Was all of the wind, we were all out there windsurfing, and there were one of the two whales. I'm not sure if it was Delta or Dawn, but it was one of them. <laughs> Thank you.